Hey, what's up growers? Today we're covering one of the most stressful moments in any indoor garden. You walk in, the plant looks like it got hit overnight, and you can feel your stomach drop. Leaves are yellowing, tips are browning, growth is stalling, and you're sitting there wondering if you just lost weeks of work. This video is about emergency fixes, how to rescue plants from pH lockout and nutrient burn fast using science-backed steps that stabilize the root zone before the damage becomes irreversible. Here's the truth. Most plant emergencies aren't random. They're usually the root zone screaming for help. And the reason people lose plants isn't because the problem is impossible. It's because they wait too long or they guess. When it comes to pH lockout and nutrient burn, hours matter. The faster you diagnose correctly, the more of that plant you save and the more you preserve yield and quality. Let's start with rapid reaction, spotting the SOS. The first signs you'll usually notice are discoloration and texture changes, yellowing that spreads quickly, brown crispy tips, edges that look burnt, leaves that claw or taco, and a general lifeless look where the plant stops drinking the way it normally does. Stunted growth is a huge clue too because when the root zone is off, the plant doesn't just look worse, it stops building new tissue like it should. Now here's the critical part. pH lockout and nutrient burn can look similar, but they're not the same problem and the wrong fix can make things worse. Nutrient burn is typically an overdose situation, EC is too high, salts build up, water is pulled out of the root cells, and the plant essentially gets dehydrated while sitting in wet media. That's why you see scorched tips and margins, darker, overly shiny, leaves sometimes, and a harsh, stressed appearance. pH lockout is different. In lockout, the nutrients might be present, but the pH is outside the range where roots can absorb them properly. So the plant starts showing deficiency-like symptoms even though you've been feeding. That can show up as weird, scattered chlorosis, striping, blotching, or multiple deficiency symptoms at once that don't match your feed strength. So the first rule in a crisis is simple. Don't guess based on leaf color alone. You confirm with measurements. You need two tools that actually work, a reliable pH meter and an EC or PPM meter. If you're using cheap pins that drift, you're basically steering blind. In an emergency, accuracy matters because you're making aggressive, corrective moves. Before you do anything big, calibrate your pH meter. It takes minutes, and it prevents you from fixing a problem that doesn't exist. Use proper calibration solution, rinse the probe, calibrate at the standard points, and store the probe correctly afterward. Then check your input water pH and your runoff pH. Um, if you're in a soilless or hydro-style medium, runoff readings are extremely useful. If you're in true soil, runoff can still help, but it's not always as clean of a diagnostic. So focus on trends and symptoms, not one single number. Now we move into the pH paradox, diagnosing and flushing. If your runoff pH is clearly out of range and you're seeing classic lockout behavior, the goal is to reset the root zone quickly without shocking the plant more than necessary. The emergency flush protocol is not dump gallons and hope. It's controlled. You flush with properly pH adjusted water, slowly enough that the medium actually exchanges and you measure runoff as you go. You're watching for two things, runoff pH moving back towards your target range and runoff EC coming down into a sane zone. As you flush, don't just do one massive drench and walk away. You want a steady correction. In containers, that means watering until you get meaningful runoff, pausing briefly to let the medium equilibrate, then continuing until the runoff stabilizes. The moment your runoff pH is back in range and EC is no longer extreme, you stop. Overflushing can create its own problems, especially in media that holds water, because you can suffocate roots or strip the root zone so hard that recovery takes longer. Right after a successful pH reset, the biggest mistake growers make is feeding heavy immediately because they're panicking about deficiencies. Don't do that. After lockout, the plant is stressed and the roots are sensitive. 
post-flush stabilization should be gentle, a light, balanced feed at a reduced strength, properly pH'd, and then you watch the plant's response over the next 24 to 48 hours. Your job is to restore consistent uptake, not flood the system with more inputs. Now let's handle nutrient burn because the strategy is similar on the surface but different in intention. With nutrient burn, the problem is almost always salt concentration and osmotic stress. You're not trying to fix pH as the main goal. You're trying to reduce the EC in the root zone to stop the burn from progressing and allow the plant to rehydrate and recover. That's why the rinse needs to be gentler and more targeted. You still want runoff, but you're aiming to bring EC down without turning the root zone into a swamp. This is where runoff EC becomes your best friend. If your runoff EC is significantly higher than your input, you've got buildup. A controlled flush brings that down. Then you recalibrate the feed. Recovery feeding should be noticeably weaker than whatever caused the burn and you adjust frequency too. A lot of burn incidents aren't just too strong once, they're slightly too strong too often, which accumulates over time. So you correct both concentration and schedule. If you're in a medium like cocoa or any inert substrate consistent runoff and stable EC practices help prevent future salt stacking. If you're in soil, the correction is often slower and less aggressive because the soil system buffers and holds onto ions differently. To identify the culprit, think logically. Nitrogen heavy feeding can push dark green, clawing and burn tips when overdone. Potassium overload can interfere with calcium and magnesium uptake and create weird deficiency patterns that look like lockout. Calcium issues can present as spots and necrosis, but many people misdiagnose it when the real issue is pH or excess salts blocking uptake. In other words, it's rarely one nutrient. It's usually imbalance, buildup, or pH drift. Once you've made the emergency correction, the recovery roadmap matters more than the initial rescue. Damaged leaves won't heal back to perfect. Your goal is to stop the progression and judge recovery by new growth and overall posture. Over the next few days, you monitor daily, you track how fast the plant is drinking again, whether leaf praying returns, whether new growth is coming in cleaner, and whether discoloration slows. If you can inspect roots safely in your system, you're looking for healthy color and smell, not slime or rot. Recovery is a trend, not an instant flip. Environmental optimization is the next lever. Stressed plants can't handle the same intensity as healthy plants. If the plant is in crisis, lowering light intensity slightly for a short window can reduce demand while the root zone stabilizes. Keep temperatures stable, avoid extreme heat, keep humidity in a safe zone so transpiration isn't chaotic, and make sure airflow is consistent. The idea is to reduce stress load so the plant can reestablish uptake without fighting the environment at the same time. Prevention is where pros separate themselves from chaos. Most lockouts and burns happen because of drift and buildup, not because someone did one thing wrong. You prevent these by regularly calibrating meters, tracking input and runoff pH and EC, not chasing the numbers with huge swings, and making changes gradually. If something looks off, you confirm with measurements before you escalate. Now let's go beyond the basics and talk long-term resilience. Advanced pH management isn't magic, it's stability. Using buffered approaches, understanding your water source, and building a routine that avoids violent pH corrections keeps the root zone calm. Microbiome health can also influence uptake and stress resistance, especially in systems where beneficial microbes are part of your strategy. Healthy roots are more forgiving roots. And if you want to future-proof your garden, 2026 is the era of not guessing anymore. Smart sensors, data logging, and automated dosing systems can catch drift early and prevent emergencies before they show up as leaf damage. You don't need a commercial setup, but even basic monitoring habits, consistent meter calibration, consistent runoff checks, consistent records will save you crops over time. So here's the takeaway. 
pH lockout and nutrient burn are scary, but they're fixable when you diagnose correctly, act fast, and stabilize the root zone with controlled corrections. The plant doesn't need panic, it needs precision. If this helped, drop a comment with your setup, medium, feeding style, and whether you're seeing high runoff EC or weird pH drift, because those signs could make or break your grow. That concludes this video, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.